Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video looking at economic inactivity in the UK economy. Well, economic inactivity happens when people of working age are not actively participating in a country's labour market. It means they're not employed and they're not actively seeking work and therefore not counted as unemployed. And this has serious consequences for the economy because a high level of economic inactivity can uh, essentially limit the size of the labour force and potentially lower a country's national output, GDP. Now, the latest figures for the UK in the three months from November 24 to January 25, the economic inactivity rate of people of working age was 21.5% of people aged 16 to 64. That's over 9 million people. And clearly, this is a major issue. Governments and businesses are trying to develop strategies to encourage economic activity, particularly amongst those affected by long term health conditions. So here are the economic inactivity rates in the UK over the last what 25 years, really. You can see a rise in inactivity among younger people. Some of that is people staying longer in further and higher education. But there's some other worrying trends as well. The overall figure, of course, for the UK, 21%. And these are some of the reasons why people are inactive. And you can see here an increase in the number of people uh, saying they're inactive because of long term sickness or temporary sickness. And it's a crucial factor here uh, because uh, we'll come back to that in a second. The impact of long COVID in particular is having an effect on economic inactivity. This chart, I think, is particularly relevant. Youth in inactivity levels in the UK. This is the number of people. So we've gone from 1.7 million in 2000 to over, or just over 3 million young people of working age who are not active in the labour market. Common reasons, well, students typically, if you stay in full-time education, some obviously many students work, they have full-time or part-time jobs, but many students elect to remain in full-time education so they're economically inactive. People might take early retirement or they might reach the official retirement age, but early retirement is a factor. Uh, people might be carers looking after children and also elderly relatives or other dependents. The so-called sandwich generation, people are still looking after their children, but also having to look after elderly relatives. Uh, there could be, a, a, and there is an issue with long-term sick and disability. So people are unable to work due to chronic health conditions or disabilities. Of course, many people who, are, who suffer from one or more health conditions and disabilities do work. And there are discouraged workers. It's very hard to work out how many people this refers to, but this is people perhaps who've been unemployed for a long time, who've tried to find new work, but essentially they've stopped looking for work uh, due to repeated unsuccessful attempts. They've lost the motivation uh, to continue with active job search. Now, long-term sickness is an issue worth knowing about. This chart shows the number of inactive people due to accredited to long-term sickness in the UK. And it was on a downward trend uh, for most of the period, but you can see the impact of this, particularly, of course, since the pandemic happened in the spring of 2020. The number of people who are long term sick climbed by well over 800,000 people from 2018 onwards. It has come down marginally since, which is a welcome sign, but it's a significant increase and one to be aware of. Why is inactivity seen as a big economic issue? Well, first of all, it reduces household incomes. The risk of poverty, if you live in a workless household where nobody is in full-time or part-time work, goes up significantly. Those out of work for long periods, the long-term unemployed, find it much harder to re-enter employment, and that worsens uh, both uh, relative poverty and social mobility. Secondly, of course, we can link inactivity to labour shortages. Uh, fewer people in the workforce means that businesses across the country are struggling to fill vacancies, particularly in key sectors, health and social care, construction, retail and hospitality. So that lowers GDP and also it can lower productivity in key sectors. The government pays the price for inactivity. So there's a welfare bill to pay for people on universal credit, people on sickness and disability benefits. So that increases government spending government borrowing, the national debt, and limits the ability to spend on spend that money on infrastructure or key public services, such as education and transport. And there's an issue to do with demography. The UK does have an ageing population. The median age is rising. There are more people retiring early and fewer workers entering the labour market. So that reduces the ratio of workers to pensioners 
and that makes it harder in the long term to fund pensions and maintain key public services. So economic inactivity has both economic and social consequences. There are private costs and externalities as well. What can we do about it? Well, the default in many students' answers that I've been reading is to reform benefits or cut benefits. I think you have to be careful going across with such generalised, glib ideas. There are many things that can be done. First of all, occupational health services. So encouraging businesses to provide workplace health services to support people who are trying to return to work. And linked with that, investing in mental health support, including things like cognitive behavioural therapy. So accessing health care, mental health care, therapy and counselling, including talking strategies um, for those unable to work due to anxiety, depression and other uh, mental conditions. You might make uh, it's easier and more flexible to retire, to allow phased retirement or flexible work schedules for older employees. And that might also include reforming pensions so that people can continue to work, earning money, being active in the labour force without it consequently suffer, uh, causing their pension uh, to suffer. Give employers incentives for hiring older workers, perhaps wage subsidies for companies hiring individuals over 50. Uh, crucially, increasing female participation in the labour market by increasing government-funded childcare and trying to reduce costs for parents. And crucially also, improving workers' rights. Some people are inactive because pay, the work does not pay. Uh, we have a, a lot of people in this country who are in insecure, low-paid work. So ensuring fair wages through higher minimum wages, uh, reinforcing job security and workplace conditions to encourage more people to enter the workforce because they think it is worthwhile financially. So addressing the poverty trap and the benefits trap. So economic inactivity. Keep, the, keep that figure in mind, everybody. 21.5% of the population of working age in the UK are economically inactive. It's a deadweight loss of... Scarce labour resources, <clears throat> depending on the cause, obviously. It's a drag on growth and a drain on government finances. And it's becoming a major economic issue and one that you need to be aware of for your exams. I hope you found the video useful. Uh, please put any comments in the comments section. Press like if it was a useful video. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, stay safe, stay happy, stay curious and see you sometime soon.